Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about Smart PLS. Basically, we are using Smart PLS in, in the circumstances when either independent variable or dependent variable is captured on the Likert scale or Likert-like scale. Then we use structural equation modeling. I am talking about this quadrant where dv or iv is in scale data. Now, what is the difference between the first generation technique which is uh, which we used to uh, use it previously and the second generation techniques which have been uh, recently developed. In case of first generation techniques which we which are the examples are cluster, exploratory, multidimensional, ANOVA, logistic regression and multiple regression. The basic assumption was that uh, errors are uh, errors are normally distributed or uh, uh, the assumption was that data is free of the error. But in case of second generation technique, which is covariance based same or smart PLS, we try to identify the error component of the data. And according to the Chin, his words are that these techniques allow accounting of measurement error in observed variables. Now, what is the difference between PLS SAM and covariance based SAM? Let us understand. The basic difference is objective. The objective of PLS SAM is the prediction oriented and that's the reason we are having PLS predict menu in uh, smart PLS. While case of covariance based SAM, it is more a parameter oriented. If I talk about the distribution assumptions, uh, smart PLS is non-parametric, covariance based is uh, parametric. It means that the data should be uh, normal. Uh, in case of covariance based SAM, normal distribution is necessary. Normality in the data is necessary. Required sample size, in case of smart PLS, it can work on sm small sample size also. In case of covariance, we require some large sample size. Model complexity, uh, smart PLS can very well handle small, uh, large models. Uh, in case of covariance based SAM, uh, 50 plus indicator variables are problematic. Parameter estimates, in case of smart PLS, potential bias can be there. While in case of uh, MS, they are more stable if uh, normality assumptions are met. Indicators per construct, it means that uh, uh, one or two items can also represent one construct or one or two measured variables can also represent the construct. While in case of MS, minimum three or four items would represent one construct. If I talk about uh, measurement model, <coughs> sorry, if I talk about measurement model, uh, it can work on formative and reflective both while in case of covariance it can only work on reflective goodness of fit it means that we are having uh, many indicators or rather uh, many uh, statistics are there in case of ms to test the goodness of fit here we have none now let us try to understand that what is the whole concept of using the structural equation modeling why do we go for structural equation modeling let us assume that these are four players which are representing one football team. Now this football team is not going to play this one. On behalf of this football team, these players are going to play. So the performance of this team player is representing the team. Okay. So one person, how much contribution he or she can give to the football team that we are considering as variance by that particular player. Now let us replace this team players by our statements that S1, S2, S3, S4 are the statements or the measured variables or the items which have been used to represent one construct and that it can be a loyalty. So here we require such statements which are having high explanatory power or it can explain high variance on loyalty. So loyalty is a construct which cannot be directly captured. So instead of this, we are using some measured variables, some statements which will represent the loyalty. So when we are having such type of, uh, we want to test such type of model in our uh, data, then we go for such tactics. According to Hensler, this, uh, the root of all this 
either it is structural equation modeling or a path analysis or confirmatory, exploratory or regression. The root is correlation. There should be some correlation among the statements. Then only we can go for such type of techniques. Now when we will draw the model, we will have, we will have two types of model. One is structural model and another is a measurement model. Measurement model is the relationship of construct with the measured variable, rather football team with the players. So when I'm trying to study about, about this blue, uh, blue oval with the yellow one, I'm talking about this is a measurement model. But when I'm trying to study the relationship of blue with blue, or rather construct with construct, it is known as inner model. Okay, the statistics required for both of them are different, which we will see in our subsequent sessions. Now concept measured by proxy by variables, I'll give you one example. Then I, I want to capture the satisfaction of the restaurant. I cannot capture directly and instead of this, I'm using some statements. The taste of the food was excellent. The speed of the service met, by, met my expectations. The wait staff was very knowledgeable about the menu items. The background music in the restaurant was pleasant. The meal was at good value compared with the price. Now all these things can be captured on Likert scale and these are considered to be the proxy variables, the indicator variables, the measured variables, they all are one and the same thing. But they are representing the something that is known as satisfaction. Remember one more thing that in your questionnaire construct will nowhere come into the picture only the statements will be there in your questionnaire. It is at the only at the analysis time you will say that these statements represent satisfaction, these statements represent loyalty that way. Now, if I represent this thing in in a form of a box or a, in a form of a home, let's try to say that this is your home. And when I'm trying to study about the outer model, which is known as a measurement model. So I want that my outer walls should be very tough. Okay my outer walls of the home should be very tough and therefore when I am trying to study about the measurement model the statistics or rather what I'll do is I'll study the reliability and the validity of the outer model or the measurement model once this is once we establish the reliability and validity of the outer model then we will move into the inner model that is the relationship of construct with construct so in that scenario, we'll be using some different statistics. That is, we will use path coefficient and R square. The inner model is just like your furniture, which you are going to keep. You can organize this any way. But when I talk about outer model, it's necessary that first it is tested and then only you can go for inner model. So according to the authors, first you have to establish the reliability and validity of the model and then only you should go for inner model. PLSM can only works on recursive model. It means that it does not work on circular or loop, uh, loop structure. So this is recursive model only, one-sided arrow only, it will, uh, arrows moving from left to right. No, it does not work on non-recursive, means if there are circular references, it will not work. Now, there is something which is known as a sequence of construct in smart PLS, which you have to maintain that what come first, then later on. That way we have to maintain the sequence of construct in our uh, analysis. So if I represent this thing in form of, uh, say, for example, this is my path model. So reputation is going to affect satisfaction. Satisfaction is going to affect loyalty. Now here there is a concept of endogenous and exogenous. Exogenous, it means more uh, uh, like an independent variable. So reputation is exogenous, loyalty is endogenous. Satisfaction at the same moment of time, it is endogenous also and it is an exogenous also. Sequence of construct, it is going to be an horns of dilemma because how to follow uh, which sequence, it's more confusing. So rather you should go for the literature review. Some researchers assume that the uh, customer satisfaction precedes and predicts corporate reputation, while others argue that corporate reputation predicts customer satisfaction. So this is going to be there. So theory and logic should always determine the sequence of construct. This you should remember in a conceptual model, but when the literature is 
inconsistent or unclear researcher must use their best judgment so however selecting the best sequence is a tough task for the researcher and therefore you should try to study more literature and you should take opinion that which sequence should follow for keeping the constructs so this horns of dilemma they are going to remain and it uh, the researcher has to resolve this so thank you you can subscribe to my channel you can keep following me on linkedin and twitter